What I did was I laid out some cardboard, spray painted it a couple of times, to make both boards the exact same length. You're gonna take your first hula hoop that's already painted, and you're gonna set it on top of the boards. Then what we're gonna do is drill through all four corners here. You're gonna put one of your hooks in with it. Make sure it's facing up and you'll screw it through it. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Now what we're gonna do is turn it around and do the other side. We're gonna take a little bit of dab of glue right next to the screw, take the rope and just gently wrap Wrap it around the loop. Do you love burning jar candles but don't know what to do with the wood lid? Spray paint a wood candle jar lid with white spray paint and let it dry completely. Flip the lid over and place it on top of a paper napkin. Trace around the perimeter of the jar lid with a pencil and then cut out the circle. Separate the layers of the napkin. Brush a layer of decoupage glue onto the top of your painted and dry wood jar lid. Brush another layer of decoupage glue over the top of the napkin. So I'm gonna start this project with a empty marinara jar. I'm bringing out Mod Podge and I'm taking food coloring and putting the food coloring into the Mod Podge. I'm essentially mixing it all together to turn it into kind of a murky brownish green color. I'm getting out a cookie sheet and some newspaper, pouring the mixture, the Mod Podge mixture into the jar and I'm spinning the jar to try and get as much coverage on the interior of the jar as I can. I'm going to set my jar upside down, allow it to kind of dry and kind of uh, let the excess drain out. The jar sit for about an hour. We're going to take all of our bottles and we're going to make sure that they're top side up and we're going to bake these at 225 for about 45 minutes to 65 minutes. And as you can see, each of them kind of has a different tint. So you can really play around with the colors when you're mixing up your Mod Podge. We're starting with a toilet paper roll and we are gonna cut it down to about half this size. So I'm gonna be taking an X-Acto blade. I essentially want to create like a flat piece and I'm gonna go around the inside. I want it to kind of fall here. And so I'm just gonna continue to add glue around the surface. So I'm gonna take a big heap of this and we're gonna just start layering it on. So we're gonna do essentially the same thing, but I'm gonna start by over the exposed base of the toilet paper roll. So I let this dry for about 24 hours. I have a sanding block. All right, now that we've sanded this down, we're gonna wipe it off. Take two woven tissue boxes and some round puck lights with a remote control. Glue the bottom of a puck light to the inside of a tissue box so it is centered over the hole. Run some hot glue around the top of one of the tissue boxes. Flip the other tissue box upside down and attach it to the glued top of the other box. Hang your new sconce on the wall you wanna pick up two bowls. Make sure they are ceramic or glass and that they are heat proof. I took them home and I'm gonna give them a coat of spray paint. Once the paint is dry, these bowls have a really nice textured look. I'm just gonna use some really strong glue to adhere them together. In the top bowl, I am going to add three wicks. I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to secure them to the bottom. Then I'm gonna grab two wooden skewers and wrap the wick around the skewers. This is just gonna hold everything in place. Great way to make your own candle is to reuse existing candle wax. I have a couple of these Dollar Tree tall pillar candles and I'm gonna place them in some boiling water. Now make sure you're wearing gloves. These can get really hot and I'm just gonna gently boil this until all the wax is melted. Pour the wax from all the candles into a metal container with a handle. I'm opting to add a little essential oil for some scent and now we're just gonna pour that melted wax. Then you're gonna wanna walk away for about 24 hours. When it is completely set, you can trim the wicks down and use your candle. Spray paint the lid in a favorite color. Once the painted jar lid is completely dry, wipe off the top surface with some rubbing alcohol and let it air dry. Order a monogram sticker, place the monogram face down on the candle jar lid and rub it multiple times over the top of the sticker with the credit card edge. Quick trip to my local Dollarama. Separate the layers. Cut the napkin so that you have enough to cover the body of the jar. Now I'm using some clear glue mixed with a tiny amount of water. Paint it onto the side of the glass jar. Then lay down the paper napkin. And then using a piece of scrunched up plastic wrap, 
Use that to pat down the napkin and eliminate any wrinkles that way. Draw around the lid because that will be the right size and cut out the piece of napkin, stick it to the bottom of the jar in the same way. Using the same process, cut out a circle for the top and a little strip for the edge and stick it in place. When it was dry, I decided to give it two coats of a gloss varnish. I have taken a battery operated puck light and stuck it into the lid of the glass jar. I grabbed a corrugated cardboard box and a tin can from my recycling for this elegant home decor. I cut the cardboard about a quarter inch taller than the tin can. I wet a tea towel and pressed it onto the top of the cardboard to make it damp, not wet. This helped to loosen it so I could pull the top layer off and expose the corrugated part. Then I flipped it over and painted the top half inch and top edge antique white using acrylic paint. I flipped it back and painted the whole corrugated surface in antique white and then I started blowing blending with the other colors. I used a sponge to add black, gray, and I spray painted some silver for a metallic touch. I added more antique white on top and blended it all together using my paintbrush. Once dried, I wrapped it around the tin can, hot glued it together. Start to paint your pots and saucers with a matte finish paint or chalk paint. Take a paper napkin and separate the two ply layers. Draw a circle and cut it out with scissors. Take the saucer and brush the decoupage glue so the bottom and sides of the saucer are covered. Place the paper napkin circle and press down in the center and smooth the napkin out. Dip a small paintbrush in water and brush along the top of the saucer. Add a final layer of decoupage glue, take a strong adhesive glue and place a ring of glue. Place the saucer on top of the bottom of the pot. On one of my most recent trips to Dollar Tree, I came across these glass bowls and as well I spotted these cool margarita glasses. I'm going to take some E6000 and I'm going to spread it around on the bottom of the margarita glass. And then I'm also going to pl apply some E6000 on the bottom of one of the glass bowls. Then I'm going to place it on top. I'm going to leave this to set. In the meantime, I'm going to take my second glass bowl and I'm going to take some E6000 and I'm going to take an old drawer and then place that on top. Next time you're at Dollar Tree, grab one of these square clear plastic containers, a round garden dish, and some of these silver and white plates from the wedding aisle. And then I also had these wooden candle holders. I'm gonna use a little bit of E6000 to secure them into place. And then I'm gonna let this securely set. I'm also going to take the round garden dish and I'm going to glue that with the E6000 on top of the candle holders. Once it's dry, I took this appliance epoxy spray paint and I gave it a good coat. Then I'm going to take my plastic plate and I'm going to glue it to the front using the E6000. And then I'm going to give the whole thing a spray with this gray chalk paint. And then I'm going to come in just with some gray acrylic paint. I'm going to give it some texture on the sides as well as working in some black to give it a little bit of definition. Metallic spray paint and I also sprayed the garden dish on the top and then I came in with some white paint and I just dry brushed it on. I decided for the bottom part I wanted to add a little bit of a bright color so I used this dune grass from Country Chic Paint and I lightly patted over top. I next came in with this metallic paint. I did end up taking the plate off the front part because it was easier to work with. Then I took some Mod Podge and I printed off a vintage scale face and I Mod Podge that into the middle of the plate. Then I took this and glued it back onto the front part. Mm -hmm. 